Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, now, let's look at the week ahead, uh, starting July the 31st, and it will be a very busy week. Let me zoom in a little bit, right? It will be a very busy week this week with US non-farm payrolls and earnings reports taking center stage in the US investors will also be following factory orders, jolts job um, openings and ISA manufacturing and services PMIs. Elsewhere, central banks in the United Kingdom and Australia will be deciding on the course of their monetary policy. Additionally, uh, in the spotlight will be on um, a second quarter GDP growth rates for the euro area as well as inflation rates for the euro area. Uh, Switzerland and finally uh, China will release manufacturing and services PMI data while Japan, Germany and the euro area and Canada will publish in, uh, unemployment rates so lots going on uh, this week uh, fundamentally to potentially uh, data to move the markets and before we get into uh, the charts and some other fundamentals. Just a reminder for the guys that are in the Discord group, I have um, updated the fundamental analysis spreadsheet with my bias um, biases on the pairs as well. And you can watch the um, men, members' videos as well um, in the Trading Videos channel. And so I've got the technical analysis as well as the uh, weekly fundamental analysis videos that go into a lot more depth as well as previous videos that I've got you know, the setups on. So that's for the members. Now, getting into the, uh, the dollar index and looking at the dollar first. And really, um, this week we had US growth accelerate to 2.4, which is a percent, which was a surprise on resilient consumers and companies. So, household spending tops estimates, business investment robust, and latest data are likely to add to hopes that, you, that, that the US can skirt a recession. So, the US economic uh, growth unexpectedly picked up steam in the second quarter thanks to resilience among consumers and businesses in the face of high interest rates and so yeah it was a it was a bit of a surprise and the US economy is in better shape than economists had, had expected it would be uh, just a few months ago while forecasters are split on the odds of a recession a strong labor market sturdy consumer spending and now easing inflation have fueled hopes that the US will avoid a downturn and so it says here the Fed staff are no longer forecasting a recession, uh, Jerome Powell said Wednesday uh, after the central bank raised its interest rates by a quarter percentage point. Powell said that uh, its own expectations, um, um, his own expectations, sorry, uh, expectation that the Fed can cool inflation without a big increase in unemployment. And so that is really what is supporting the, uh, the dollar at the moment, right? Because a lot of... Uh, uh, the market were pricing in a recession and a recession isn't supportive of a currency but if you have uh, inflation coming down yeah uh, to the two to the two percent target while you have um, GDP uh, actually supportive of of um, of the rate hikes that have been going on then that typically is positive overall right <clears throat> and so we're going to get to the comparison, for example, with the euro at the moment. And so the dollar, I've uh, taken a long position on a uh, on a dollar pair, matter of fact, um, in this uh, understanding this and what's happened. And so dollar, I was actually a bit bearish on this, but the data seems to be very, very resilient. So uh, I've taken a, a, a a long trade on the uh, dollar Swiss with the data, and so uh, let's see what happens with that. But um, but yeah, so inflation as well. Looking at inflation, inflation cooled while consumer spending picked up in June, and so uh, the Fed are actually getting the best of both worlds. And so a recession being avoided is going to be positive for the uh, for the dollar. And so um, looking at something like the uh, the dollar yen. 
Um, the dollar yen is, you would think on the surface that the, the, the dollar would be the buy in the short term, but recently we had the Bank of Japan um, adjust yield curve control. So Bank of Japan sends yield soaring with surprise change to rate limit. And so it was a bit of a surprise. Keeps negative rates, uh, says 10 year yield band, a reference point. And Bank says more flexible approach will help sustainability. Now, um, we've been waiting for this for ages, right? I think the market have been waiting for this for ages and there are uh, some nuances uh, to the yield curve control and it says here while the bank of japan left its short-term policy interest rate unchanged at 0.1 percent ueda said that the moves didn't represent a step towards the end of its yield curve control program some investors were unconvinced and so um it's my opinion that the um, that the waiter is really just trying to talk down the uh, yield curve control, but it's the first step really uh, to understand that they are on the uh, path to policy normalization, meaning that um, they may start to adjust the um, their interest rates from negative to actually now neutral. We might go to you know zero percent one, but it all does depend upon um, the. Um, inflation right so if inflation starts to get out of hand then in fact um, the Bank of Japan will be forced to start to look to hike rates and employ a monetary policy that will look to appreciate their currency now from a from a dollar yen perspective you have you know some short-term um, uh, dollar buying as well as I think personally um, some yen buying but the two areas I think you know I'm looking at look getting involved in um, the yen would be really at these turning points here so the one four twos the high of that um, or anywhere pretty much I think around now um, as it in regards to a short or in fact my preferable uh, area to for a trade would be one four four so i might enter a small position down here if that doesn't work out then i'll be looking at um some um a, a, a short trade in and around uh, this area here and even higher if it does get there because i do think that the uh, the yen now is starting to be a Buy. But uh, in the short term, I think a lot of traders may get uh, stop hunted, liquidity hunted, um, and stops get taken out as prices rise. But I do think that the upside or the downside to the yen is actually capped. And so I, I guess in the short term, you can look for any kind of trade, any pullbacks. But I think overall, my medium to long term perspective would be to look for short trades on that pair uh, dollar swiss the dollar swiss is a bit of a um, the swiss has been a bit of a strange one but i think overall i think there's a limit to the downside now with the dollar doing much better than expected i do think that any pullbacks into you know these lows are uh, decent buying opportunities the yen i'm sorry the uh, swiss franc do have uh, their inflation, I think, is at one point seven percent. Is their I think their headline inflation, and so even though they are continuing to be hawkish, the yen has strengthened. I'm sorry, is in the yen the uh, the Swiss franc has strengthened uh, since then, which would actually the expectation is for actually uh, the inflation to still come down even lower. And if it does come down lower before the um, they announce that they are hiking then in fact they may change their bias before the announcement and so i think there is an, an, a really good opportunity to look for some long trades if you're not long already any pullbacks into um actually in fact this is a demand zone here as well any pullbacks into that demand zone i think a decent buying opportunities as long as again the data supports a narrative right so um so there's that um dollar cad and the canadian dollar and the bank of canada are not really um it's a bit of a tricky one because there is data uh, basically suggesting that the uh, canadian dollar may not hike rates one more time and if they do hold rates while the federal reserve are looking to uh may look to hike rates yeah as well 
according to their dot plot they've got one more in them so um, I think there could be more upside potential on the dollar CAD now again if uh, the data comes out this week FOMC for example doesn't support um, you know uh, the uh, the US economy then in fact you could see prices uh, start to you know move a bit lower but I think with the economy doing well and uh, again jobs this week hopefully it does support the, uh, the dollar of course because I'm in I'm long dollar at the moment um, then um, I think there could be a decent uh, um, uh, buy trade and continuing buys as long as the data supports um, the dollar buying so uh, but not really a pair that I'm really kind of interested in uh, look at New Zealand dollar New Zealand dollar is going to be interesting this week based on the fact that they have probably the highest inflation out of the pairs that we trade and although the RBNZ has come out and said that they're looking to hold rates in fact there could be uh, an opportunity for the bank to maybe resume um, hiking rates based off of the fact that you have um, uh, uh, jobs and employment and so some of the bank reports that we've been reading um, privately have suggested that there could actually be a, um, a resumption to hiking for the RBNZ and that depends on the data this week in terms of uh, in terms of employment so if, if the employment comes out uh, sticky or higher than expected then in fact that puts pressure on the RBNZ to look to high rates and then you could actually see a little bit of a rally but I think overall um, medium term I think the dollar could still be a buy so any pullbacks into this area here or even up to you know these highs I think could be decent um, uh, buying opportunities for the dollar um, but my conviction would be a lot more um, solid if data this week comes out and it's not great for the RBNZ then literally the uh, this, this pair is I think is an out and out sell looking at the pound and the pound um, when you compare the uh, monetary policy interest rate hiking cycle it looks like the Bank of England are the bank that are looking to hike the most at the moment and so um, it says here with uh, Whipsaw UK traders get no rest with Bank of England rates uh, anyone's guess right so UK rates volatility on the rise uh, on on the rise while easing the US and in Europe in Europe let me get my words out sorry while easing in US and Europe so Bank of England uh, Governor Bailey has delivered market surprises in the past and so um, there's a little bit of a of uncertainty around the um, whether they are going to be hiking by 25 basis points or 50 basis points so volatility in the EU uh, is rising in the UK bond market ahead of a knife edge interest rate decision from the Bank of England while money markets pricing and economist surveys tilt towards a quarter point hike on Thursday. Investors are bracing for a surprise with Goldman Sachs Group, HSBC, Barclays and UBS Group envisioning 50 basis points of tightening. So the contrast with the World Telegraph quarter point hikes delivered last week by the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank couldn't be starker. So again, um, there's differences there right more than a year and a half into the Bank of England's hiking campaign the market is still in the dark over how much tightening it stands to deliver to combat inflation and it speaks to the challenges officials face in balancing the need for tighter policy against moves that could hobble growth and so um, definitely uncertainty around how much hikes are going to uh, the Bank of England may uh, do but at the same time um, it's different from the um, the Federal Reserve where the Federal Reserve are pretty much like okay are we gonna hike or are we not whereas the Bank of uh, England are looking at it from the perspective of how much hikes are we going to do it's not a case of whether they will or won't so from that perspective I do think that the uh, the, the, the pound is more of a buy than um, than the, uh, the, the the dollar and so you do have a little bit of a some demand there although I, it's not necessarily the strongest area of demand you're probably looking at if you can maybe some sort of pullback if you didn't get involved in here if, if that 
demand zone breaks down, I think that's a decent area to look for any kind of buy trades. Although I'm bullish um, overall on the dollar, I wouldn't necessarily buy the dollar against the, uh, the pound at the moment, but we do have as well an area here where we have some supply. So depending on what happens this week, you could get a bit of a sell off if they, I think if they hike by 25 basis points, I think the market could potentially sell off, but I do think that the, um, the fact that the Bank of England are expected to hike a lot more than the Fed. Um, these demand zones will be uh, should be supportive areas for the uh, for the pound. And I think there was another was there another article I had? No, I didn't have any other articles. So that's where we are um, with the pound uh, pound dollar. Uh, the euro dollar, on the other hand, there was uh, some disappointing news, and there's been some disappointing news for uh, for Europe. Mainly, you're looking at um, interest rate uncertainty now. So ECB rate uncertainty looms over weakening Eurozone economy. And so Germany exits a recession but fails to grow for third quarter. And ECB officials warn more hiking may follow any September pause. So now they're thinking about a September pause. And so there are banks are pondering uh, options of another ECB hike. And if I zoom in a little bit, uh, what it says here is that You've got Goldman, Morgan Stanley and City that think that in fact there's likely to be one more hike, um, another quarter point uh, hike at some point, maybe in September, whereas there are some other banks, Nordea, BNP, Paris, Paribas and AMB AMRO, that actually think that the ECB should now hold rates, right? So um, it says here what, what those banks um, are and what they're Basically, if they're looking to, um, if they think that the ECB will hold or hike. And so now there's uncertainty around um, the um, uh, hikes. And this is really due to the economy and um, the Eurozone economy. And so I've done to head of myself there. Uh, what else was there? Sorry, it was, no, it was here. So understanding that, what you do have is... Um, a situation where if the market isn't necessarily all out convinced and consensus wise isn't convinced that there's going to be uh, hikes, then you get a move to the downside. And so I do think with the Fed um, being in a better position economically than Europe, that may be looking like a really nice uh, buying opportunity for the dollar and a nice shorting opportunity on the um, on the euro dollar. And but if prices do come down to this 108.50s, that could be actually a decent buy. I think there might be a limit to the uncertainty. And even if it comes down to maybe somewhere like the uh, 107.50s, but again, the data will have to support that narrative. I think for now, the um, the fact that they are a bit more dovish, the Europe are a bit more dovish. I think there's a decent. Um, short trading here if prices do come up to the 110s, uh, sorry, 111s, 111.5s, but also as well where you have um, the euro which had a strong demand at the uh, 108.50s. So, um, either way you look at it, I think there's uh, definitely some nice trading opportunities in and around this area, but I think it, at the moment, in the short term, it looks like the, uh, the momentum is with the Federal Reserve. Euro yen. Um, I'm actually a bit bearish on this currency pair. Um, I'm buying, looking to buy the yen. And um, let's see, one second, Let me just adjust this. So if prices, I'm going to delete this as well. Prices coming up to the these highs, I think, are going to be nice shorting opportunities, especially since the uh, European Central Bank um, is, you know, potentially thinking about a hold, right? So how 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 much higher can this go? And as well as the uh, the Bank of Japan potentially on the um, hiking cycle, and that needs to be priced in. So I think any um, moves up into these into this supply zone is a decent uh, buy. At the moment, there is some demand around here. I don't really like to draw demand uh, like this, but you can definitely make an argument that there is demand around there. Um, so any pullbacks, I think, into that zone, if you want to be long on the uh, in the euro, uh, is decent. 
and especially because you do have the confluence of some support and resistance within that area as well so if price does come down to that area there i think that could be a nice technical area to look for a potential buy as you do have some demand there uh, euro pound um, my bias would actually probably be more to the short side as you can see there's definitely more uh, hikes coming for the bank of england so um, from this perspective looking for any kind of short trade uh, on a pullback, I think is probably the better move rather than buying the euro. I'd probably rather buy the uh, the the, um, the pound. Got nice uh, supply zone there, and again with some support, decent support and resistance within that area. So lots of uh, trading activity expected in this area, if not just above it. I think that's going to be quite nice for a potential buy. Uh, for the pound um, yeah I think not, not much to say about that if you do want to be a buyer of the euro obviously you're looking at a bit of a bit more of a pullback into this zone and then looking for a buy trade although this level has been touched uh, once already so it doesn't necessarily mean it's the strongest area of demand um, Aussie uh, dollar so Aussie dollar um, the Australian dollar is expected they say to, to high rates, but uh, there are some um, uh, there's some issues with that potentially. They could hold rates, um, and if I think if they do hold rates, then I think we're definitely going down to the um, this lower end of the uh, of the demand zone. But we'll see. I think at the moment the the dollar, the US dollar, that is, I think um, are in a decent place. So I think any pullbacks, I think the limit of the move really is going to be up at these highs. And I think anything um, that suggests that, in fact, it's not from there, it's from there. I think anything that suggests that the RBA are done with hiking and the dollar and the Federal Reserve are not, then I think that's going to be a nice uh, short trade at the, um, especially at that 68 round number. I think that's going to be a nice area to look for any kind of shorts within that supply zone. Again, if we do get this week a hike, then uh, you should get some at least some short-term um, appreciation for the Australian dollar. And it also depends upon whether they are going to continue to be hawkish. So it's it's really about the statement afterwards. And gold. And so gold, uh, finally, we've got a bit of news out about gold. JP Morgan sees gold charging to records in 2024 as Fed cuts rates and so bank sees mild u.s recession and rate cuts in second quarter uh, of 2024 has price target at 2175 for the final three months of next year so um basically jp morgan sees opportunity in gold ahead of a likely u.s recession predicting prices will push past 2000 an ounce and so um yeah it says here failing uh, sorry falling real yields in the u.s will be a significant driver for the precious metals when the Federal Reserve starts to deploy rate cuts, which should play out in the second quarter of next year, Greg Shearer, Executive Director of Global Commodities Research, said in an online briefing on Wednesday. And so um, in preparation, you know, when uh, when central banks look to buy gold, it can take them a while. So they could be stockpiling for now. It could be, a, a, of course, a pullback. We've bounced off of this, uh, th this demand zone here. I think if the dollar starts to strengthen, we could get another pullback into uh, these eight, 19, um, uh, 1900 areas and even down into maybe the 1820s. Wouldn't that be something? But ultimately, if uh, banks are buying gold, um, you know, in, with the expectation that prices should be somewhere up at these 2100 um, uh, prices within maybe the next, you know, maybe six to eight to nine months then um you know they're, they're not necessarily trading gold they're looking to potentially look to buy for cheaper right but in the short term i do think that if the dollar is a buy then gold is likely to be a sell and so um let's see what happens here especially if they start to avoid a recession from like the uh, the u.s economy if that if they avoid a recession risk is kind of um on the table which means that you know it positively supports um uh, the dollar which again means that gold is likely to 
potentially go down to um, these areas here. So if you're buying gold right now, you really have to have a bearish bias on uh, the dollar. And I don't really have that at the moment. So I do think that price may start to look for, um, look to fall or again, we could see prices start to move higher. Either way, um, I think your, your, your bias on gold should be based off of what happens and what's happening in the US economy. And as long as you've got the data to support that narrative, then um, you know that makes all the sense in the world. So um, non-farms this week, although I am long on the dollar, if non-farms comes out and it is very disappointing, I could obviously change my mind on the dollar and switch my bias. But ultimately, as long as the data supports a stronger uh, dollar and the uh, the US economy is avoiding a recession at the moment and they are looking to potentially high rates, then uh, my bias is to, uh, to go actually long on the dollar. So that's it for this week. I uh, hope you have a great trading week and uh, take care. All the best.